Okay, so let's welcome Joaquin Berenger uh, with a talk about uh, Internet of Things. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I hope you like the, the presentation. We are going to talk, as he said, from uh, Internet of Things that gives you a, a better idea of what, what's going on there. Okay. Uh, we are in front of some big business in front of us. As you could see here, more, in, by 2020, more than 25 million apps is going to be there. Well, it's difficult to have in four years so many applications, but okay, that's what they said. But in case uh, that's not true, the, what is going to be true is that, that the revenue opportunity there is, is huge. And the gigabytes of data that are going to be managed is going to be huge as well. As you could see here, the reports that all these sensors are going to to send to be stored will 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 be huge because the number of sensors around are going to be also huge. So new analytic engines are, not, are going to be needed because to re, to reflect to feed good feedback to the control uh, again sensors send right uh, information to the data stores. In order to go ahead with this, I have implemented something regarding a server that manages those kind of devices. We'll see the environment, the architecture, the certain functionality, some security uh, that ne is needed. What type of IoT devices uh, could be used here? What kind of access from mobile and desktop devices could be uh, sent? And what are events, alarms, sensors, and actuators? And what I think about the future about this? The environment is Python 351. Uh, for the uh, devices that are accessing the server, is still not there, it's 3.4. But uh, the server actually is based on threading and queues. They, they share nothing. They communicate each other uh, using queues. Uh, the database being used is MySQL, and I have my, the MySQL connector comes that from Oracle. And some personal libs that are going to be used as well uh, for MySQL and for managing uh, USB or general functions. And they're, they're actually, everything is running in Ubuntu 16. Okay, this, this architecture that is uh, actually up and running, uh, when any of these devices in this part are powered on, what they, they need to do is to register themselves into the, into the server. So they send uh, a message to the server, well, here I am, uh, my name is that, or whatever. And if it is okay, if this is uh, a right device uh, registered in my SQL database, then the IoT server uh, adapts uh, a new thread for this device. If not, the thread is terminated and the, the, is rejected the communication. So is what any of these devices, it doesn't matter where they are using Wi-Fi, is what they need to do. We will see later what type of devices are those. On the other hand, uh, uh, Kiwi, as is in the text that is, you have already in the schedule, or Flask application, uh, which is better, are using Socket.io. That means we are going to, because we need a persistent connector, connection, we are going to use uh, Socket IO web sockets and any web browser that supports uh, web sockets is going to be valid. So any of these uh, any of these devices are going to connect also to the MySQL database using user and password. And when that's done, they are ready to send messages to any of these devices below. In order to have an idea of what's going on, we have here a small application that Suppose that, we have a small that. And then we have here, online, we have extracted what kind of devices are connected to the server. We could use this one, and we could know all these kind of functions that really are now a possibility to have in those devices. We could say, okay, we want to know uh, temperature, pressure, or humidity on that device. We send to the to the server and give us what kind of measurement this this uh, 
this device is, is having it. So this is the way that's, that's happening. So we have connect using your user and password. We have a persistent uh, connection that will be valid for the rest of the, 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 the presentation. And all these devices are ready to answer any message that we are going to send. As I have said, the front end is a, a flask plus socket I.O. Uh, messages and to and from modules are executed using this socket I.O. 1.4. And uh, to send messages from the devices to the, to the application, uh, to the flask application, we are using socket I.O. client by, in Python, as we can see here. And how is this going? This is the part of the web browser. Uh, we define a number of messages for connection, for example. And this, uh, this JavaScript is sent. And at the end of the day, what we are going to execute is a function in, uh, in Python that receives the message, which is the message containing origin, destination, and what type of uh, function we want to execute. And once it's in the environment of Python, OK, we execute everything what we, we want, just defining uh, naming of the message and, uh, the, and the namespace. Inside the, uh, the server, what we have is that every time a server is waiting for connections from the IoT device, uh, once one wants to be connected, what we start is a thread socket, a thread queue, and those are blocked waiting for a message. They are doing nothing. In the future, I think I think IO could be better. By the moment, is 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 running on threads, taking into account that those threads are corresponding one customer and Every customer will have their own server, so this uh, could be enough, but I think I will try to make it happen as well. So to, the parameters to define a device at the end of the day is we need to know what kind of device, the ID of the device, the serial number, the server name, and the server port. With these five that are stored in each of the IoT devices, the first thing they are going to do is using server name and port, connect to the port uh, of that server. And the server using type of device, ID, and serial number will know if there is a good IoT device to be connected. Uh, three types of devices are happening here. We are going to have MKR1000, we see later, that will use flash memory, or EMCC with Blackbone, or SD card with Raspberry. The serial number, by definition, is not, never is sent uh, through the network in order to have more security. Uh, we will see later how this is going to happen. And different servers, the only thing that have uh, is uh, connect, uh, change the port, and we will have another server uh, uh, useful for other devices that are going to be connected. Actually, the server name is probably using uh, this no IP. The message format always have three fields that are mandatory, which is origin, destination, and message type, as we have seen here in the application. Uh, the origin is this web browser. Destination is this connected module. And the type of message that we want to send is this one. Okay. The rest of fields that depends on, on the message. We will, we will add parameters on there that will have variable length, and we'll finish with EOT. Security is used using SHA-256. Uh, we are using Haslib SHA-256 in, uh, in Python and in C implementation for MKR-1000 because need to be uh, in C. We are using Atmel documentation and, and there is a SHA-256. And devices are grouped by customer. So only 
uh, IoT devices from one customer could talk with those uh, around. So inside the, the, the server, what we have is uh, an origin thread that is, uh, sending to, is sending to the key of the destination. From the key of the destination goes to the, uh, to the device. The device executes the function and come back with the results, who goes to the origin queue, and from there, uh, and from there to, the, to the destination. We could, again, send the, we are sending this from this origin to the destination. We want to have, uh, well, we could read, we could read the gyroscope of that device, and then it's accumulating here what's going on. But the system is always the same, using queues and thread and sending the message. So we're going to define two types of devices, low consumption, and we have here an example of device. This is the size of this device. It's nearly nothing. And this is the, the, the battery that we could attach to this. And with this, we could have we could have it on your dress, and with that, you will have the possibility to do anything that you want, because you could connect this device to your, to your phone as a, an access point, and from there goes the information to anywhere. So we have here Wi-Fi, and we have, uh, oh, okay, uh, right. So with this, we have low consumption, Two, three weeks we could have with this. We have a, a lipo, uh, a lipo cell. The Wi-Fi range the, 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 that these devices have is more or less the same as a laptop. If one laptop arrives to 100 meters, this could be the same or more. That's, you have here the calculations if you like to have more uh, information. The Wi-Fi most the normal thing is this is a client, a station, but also could be used to uh, have a range extension. These devices could be used as well as an access point, and that means that we could connect one with the other and extend the, the range uh, because we could resend the message to the following one. And these are the advanced uh, modules that have been used. So all of them are Linux embedded. Most of them are Debian. And, and these we are we using here also uh, a Python. Uh, Raspberry Pi is uh, about 45. We could use OpenCV. Uh, in this case, it's more because the information or the recommendation is not good enough and the, and the contract you could have with Raspberry is not all, all limited permissions you have there. Media and education is where we could apply it. PC doing is good for, uh, also has uh, uh, an Ubuntu inside, Ubuntu uh, embedded board. Uh, we use 3.4 Python, and uh, it's good for the ones who have already things done with Arduino. And for me, the favorite is this one, BeagleBone Green Wireless. It's about 44. There is a lot of documentation, Texas Instrument, uh, a CPU with Debian or Ubuntu, is the one you want, and it's good for industrial environments, and also commercial products, because you have any kind of protocols, communication, it's quite, this is, is this one here. The mobile and desktop devices, the only thing with, that is needed is that uh, a web browser that support WebSocket, because we need, a, as I have said, a persistent connection. We, we have that using Flask and Socket.io, and that's alarms and events. So uh, we need alarms from the devices in order to send us directly uh, messages if um, a temperature is above or below a number. But also we could schedule uh, events that in our case will appear in the text area here below. We use to s this event and we send this message what usually should happen is that uh, the, the device is sending us events that will appear here downstairs in, in, a, in, a, in, this, in this area. So anything, any, any several seconds in this demo uh, are going to be in this text area 
uh, downstairs, but also are registered in the database. So we are producing information from every one of the devices that we have in front of us, uh, and they are producing information that we're going to analyze or treat in any manner. If we send the same event again, we stop sending uh, us more events. And that's the way how we generate alarms and events. Sensors, we can have seen here any kind of sensors, it depends on you, uh, which, which ones, because it's, it's above any kind of application and sensors could be used. In the case of actuators, uh, what we name an actuator is everything that we have arrived from, from the device to the, to the environment. As a matter of example, we could again go to the application and, um, and use, well, I have here also this camera that is, this is a raspberry you see is about five or six centimeters by six centimeters. And we have here six, six, 64, uh, let's say, LEDs or lamps or whatever, because the only thing we want to do is uh, right there, we could write pixel, we say, okay, we want to write the pixel number, I don't know, 26, and we send the, the, and here we have, we have the, the color. We could say, okay, blue or whatever. And when we have sent this pixel, the pixel number, whatever we have set is on, we could send letters, or we could send messages as well. So any kind of possibilities uh, are on top of what, green or... So this is what we could do with, the, with writing and any kind of send a message that writes goes in that direction. In the future, again, software is the most important. The C or, or, or Python extension of Python using C is, is, and many applications are going to develop around these products. Products like it's products like Civilly or from Login, Logmain, ThinkSpeak or Azure from Microsoft are good examples of what's going on in this area. Hardware will continue to integrate more parts of the application, decreasing price and size. Uh, wearables are, are there and we have seen them. And the, advan the industry will take advantage as well of substituting the actual solutions that are in the market. Okay, that's, that's all. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any question? Okay, so if Nobody has a question, then let's thank here, you again. In okay. GitHub, Joaquin.bb, you have uh, the documentation from here. Thank you and goodbye.